Ashley Villalobos. You are uh, one of our artists in residence mm -hmm. who um, you kind of helped start the whole thing. You've been here since the beginning, correct? Mm -hmm. 2016. Mm -hmm. What was your role in 2016? I think my primary role was uh, to be on the board. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first board members and I served there until um, I could roll off the board and start teaching classes, which I think happened two years ago. Um, naturally, uh, oh, teaching is where I wanted to be. Um, but when you're starting an organization like, like Hearts Need Art, um, you kind of fill the gaps where they're needed. So, um, so I teamed up with the board to, for, for that time period. And then when we started getting new board members and growing, um, it was a good opportunity to switch into teaching. And for teaching is a lot of fun for me um, because I, I actually see people unexpectedly get that positive release of endorphins when they're creating artwork. Mm -hmm. You have an option to follow along with the instructor or be creative, use a different color, go with your own creative inspiration, but um, by the time the class is over, people are laughing and giggling and sharing contact information and wanting to do it again, even the husbands. Every mark that you make is to be appreciated. Um, even if it's a squiggly mark or you, you swear you can't draw a straight line, um, just do it, just create. I always say that like some of the stuff that comes out of this room from people who aren't artists when you're mm -hmm. talking to them and asking them to come is so amazing to me. I started volunteering um, as an art teacher to provide creative experiences because it was a tool, a life skill that creating art they could use to help transition them faster into a better state of mood or have a little break or a respite from the traumatic experience that they were going through. Okay, sharing, sharing the creative experience with everybody uh, is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. What do you get out of coming here? Oh, it definitely fills my cup. I, I could have a busy day, a busy week, I say juggling elephants, um, but every Monday I come and I teach a class from two to four on the eighth floor, and um, you get to meet people in actually a very vulnerable place. They're they're creating something, they don't feel like artists, but you get to encourage them and um, really get to know them and kind of share that time and space with them. I think one of my favorite things about creating art in a situation like this is that um, it's not, it's a surprise to people outside your bubble to say, how was your day at the hospital? Oh, I took an art class, I painted, I drew, you know, to have something to talk about other than whatever experience, the traumatic experience you're going through mm -hmm. is very powerful. Can I share a story real quick? Yeah, that's why we're here. Um, Audrey Alamo mm -hmm. um, passed away last year. She was a very good friend of mine. And um, she never felt like she was really an artist. She started taking some um, art classes. I started helping facilitate her through watercolor and drawing and um, the Zentangle drawing method, which is this kind of stuff right here. And um, it just started to click with her and she started to feel like she was an artist. And during the time of her treatment with her friends and her family, she shared the arts, whether it was paint pouring or Zentangling, drawing um, or watercolor with her close circle all the way until the end. She just, that's the way she wanted to spend her time and share with others. And um, the artworks that were created during that time period are magnificent. Mm -hmm. And they're a collaborative. So a lot of them, everybody put their hand in. And that um, Blinded by Delight is a mutual friend of um, Audrey Alamo, Audrey and John Alamo. Do you have any stories from class that you want to share of like, things that have moved you or surprises that you've seen come out of here or? Um, I think maybe 
Oh, so many. Every yeah. class, every class has I, something I take away from. But um, I'm going to say the most recent one was I had a, a class of painters and they were all pretty peppy. Really had, um, well, what was our prompt? We were painting butterflies. Oh. Colorful butterflies. Yeah. And everybody was painting their butterfly. I encouraged them to use creativity and do their own thing. But I demonstrated in case they weren't confident with their brush or didn't know where to start. And I had one person that just absolutely was not painting a butterfly whatsoever, but he was happy and he was content. He was very quiet. Um, and he painted his entire piece with the smallest brush that we had. And it was all black. And I was really worried that he was painting all black so small, with such a small paintbrush. His piece was absolutely stunning. Um, and he had a he had a good time painting. He enjoyed listening to everybody. He enjoyed being busy with his hands. And you just can't judge someone's artwork. If someone's painting something that is really happy, do they really feel happy inside? What bravery it takes to come out and do something that is really on your heart's mind. Mm -hmm. And to just have that experience and to have a safe place in order to have that experience. So. Yeah, and I think it's great that you, he was comfortable enough with you in the class to like, you know what, I know you guys are doing that, but mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm going to take this space for myself and this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, that's what the classes are about. That's what we're here for. They're not necessarily paint the butterfly today. No. <laughs> it's paint whatever the heck you want to paint. That's right. Just paint. That's right. That's it, Ashley. You made it. You survived. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks, Richard. Uh, <laughs> class in 10 minutes. <laughs> We're ready. Let's We're go. Ready. <laughs>